just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so pace it. Rush pain, that things hate me, damn Life ain't gotta be hard, just keep it basic. All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Everyone, welcome back to Fort Meade to Classify. Today, we're sitting down with Colonel Sapp and his wife, uh, Miss Heather Sapp, who Colonel Michael Sapp is the garrison commander of the Fort Meade installation. Uh, and today, we're going to talk about their one-year review. So you guys have been here for about a year, maybe, a maybe more. Yeah, one day shy. So 365 days of command. Yeah. 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 Well, how's it been? How are you guys settling in? How do you like for me? How honest should we be? Because <laughs> those were three different questions. and uh, I mean, it's been a whirlwind. Um, I don't it think has. I've had a chance to breathe yet. I can't believe it's been a year. I know. That's a, so it's only because when you said that it was the one year in review that I was like, oh, my gosh, it's it been, a been a year. It has been a year. We've been trying to get you on the podcast for a year. We have. We scheduled yeah. at least twice, and it yeah. fell through. And I think it was her fault every <gasps> time. What? No, I'm not going to say that. I, I mean, think I'm it was TDY too, so. each time for you. Oh, okay. Your TDY is not. No, right. once was my fault. Once okay. was totally my fault. Oh, okay. I the other that. two were her fault, though. Possibly. Um, Possibly. I wasn't here then, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so it's Gloria Ann's fault. But uh, uh, I, uh, let you go first. What do you think? Which question I'm gonna talk should about I answer? Work. Oh, you're going to talk about year. work. What do you think? Question mark. Oh, I, it's, it's been a fast year packed year. It feels like we're always doing things um, just to be part of the community and to get out and see everybody and everything. We've had to pretty much fill up every weekend. We have to schedule uh, time to be together <laughs> because uh, there's a lot of community events going on. There's a lot of things we want to participate in and uh, and we want to get the kids out too. Yeah. How Spe different is it? You've been here three times. Yes, this is number three. How different is it for you two being here in this role as sort of like the you know the first family of the fort as opposed to just one of the or two of the 63,000 employees that depend on services do you want to take that one Wait, so the the first time she was working here and I wasn't I was going to grad school at uh, University of Maryland down in College Park yep. so it, and grad school is at night so we lived off base I was volunteering with my daughter's kindergarten school for a year and driving down to College Park every night for class and then doing homework on the weekends uh, because I always waited till it was due to do the turn in my papers. As you should. I, I learned well in my undergrad and applied those lessons. <laughs> but it says, uh, so the first time she was coming on, but of course, right, she comes in and goes back. Again, we lived off post. We, the connection was the strongest with EFMP. Because of Samantha, at that point, she was in you know, first grade, what, five, six years old. Six. And so we mm -hmm. were still figuring out what life is like for uh, in, uh, cerebral palsy, in her case. What, is it, mm -hmm. what does it mean to integrate and finding connections? That was most of our Fort Meade interaction that time. Yes. Uh, coming back the second time, it was in order for us both to be on the other side of the fence line. And so, it, again, we came in off of, 30, off of 32 popped in, left. This time, because I was at least on the base, we would do a little bit more of the mm -hmm. PX, the commissary, some of those normal living on base things that you would do. Uh, but if anyone had asked me, I'd say, yeah, I'm stationed at Fort Meade. But I wasn't, right? I was stationed right. at a campus. And now, coming back, we went, oh my gosh, there is so much to Fort Meade. So it, being different, it's entirely different, because now this is the first time I actually feel like we are part of the Fort Meade community rather than just coming in to go to work and go back home. You mentioned EFMP and Samantha's awesome. You have three kids. We do. But she's the only one that's awesome. Well. Oh, no. Wow. The other one wow. <laughs> They're not going to watch this. The oldest daughter <laughs> is a favorite. I, I agree. Oldest daughter is a favorite. My, my two sons get at, mad at me all the time because they have no doubt. My, my favorite is. That's also because she's the only girl, so of course she's your favorite. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But enough about me. <laughs> I'd love to hear more. Uh, <laughs> EFMP, uh -huh. knowing from when we first sat down, even when you were transitioning with Colonel Nyland, that was a big focal point of yours. 
different perspective on it now from you guys seeing it from the inside and the service provide service aspect of it um, in how we do or how difficult the FMP coordinating job is or are you more familiar with more comfortable with I don't know the right word more understanding of families and the challenges they're going through so I guess it's like a two-part question like having EFMP how does it how do you think that's helped you relate to the families and then do you find yourself a little bit more sympathetic to the program as a whole now that you in a lot of ways are running it and you probably get to hear about it every <laughs> night so I'll take the first one having an EFM um, has really expanded Banded kind of our understanding of the needs of military families at large because if if you if you kind of run in in the I work my job I take my kids to school a week vacation in the summer kind of standard things most things come fairly easy regardless of what post you're on but when you have an EFM and they have they have needs outside of the things that you routinely find on every post or around every post. Uh, it does become a challenge. You, you, every time you move, you have to um, reinitiate finding all the things that you need, and that is actually more, uh, much more complicated than I expected. There have been many times where you call and they say, "Oh, we don't do pediatrics," or "Oh, this," or "Here's the reason this won't work for us." Or we don't take TRICARE. That's a fun one. Um, mm. And uh, I would also say that um, I did not realize that the process actually had two sides to it. Uh, I thought EFMP, one thing, medical, community, it's all together. And, and it's actually not. And for families, that can be a little bit hard navigating the two sides of it uh, and getting the, the two sides to kind of melt nicely together. Yeah, and we see, and that Chad could have answered that for you because uh, <laughs> Colonel Maker has been so much trying to advocate that aspect too, the, mm -hmm. the difference between the two that comes up in town halls. Uh, but it is, for example, most recently is our daughters needed a wheelchair getting ready to go off to college. We had a wheelchair, it's broken, uh, in an automated joystick, and so the wheelchair broke. Well, we got it, in fact, we couldn't quite remember if we got it here we got or here. we did get it we here. Did get it here. So we, we received this in Maryland in around 2015. Mm -hmm. And over the time that uh, now it's been about eight years, it broke, trying to repair it so when she goes off to college that she has the ability to do this. No one wanted to touch it. Right? Companies said, no, no, if I didn't give it to you, I'm not going to repair it. And meanwhile, crazy, the company but, that gave yeah. it to us we don't know what happened. We don't know if they yeah, disappeared. They don't seem to Maybe they're anymore. not Tricare anymore. Uh, we couldn't find it, and so we went through this process of well, okay, we got an upgrade in Florida. Can we at least combine the two? Well, no, no, because we won't touch Florida's wheelchairs either. You got to go back to Florida. So it, we run this gamut, and then when we reach out to the wider EFM office, mm -hmm. like EFMP, help me. What can you do? Uh, the likes of Lisa Jacobs going, well, it's, it's not a community thing. Mm -hmm. Like, well, but it, it's, it's medical, there's a referral, but is it really medical? Well, sort of, but I can help you with our systems navigator to know what kind of therapist and can help with that, um, but we don't do the referrals. And so we were using both, Dr. Richardson has been a huge help, and our, um, our case manager, Annette, has been on it. She called 27 different wheelchair providers in this area and not a single one of them would do repairs so we had to start the whole referral system over again to get an entirely new wheelchair so it, but when Heather mentions that idea of finding things out every time we've moved and then Samantha uh, God bless her but she's been in 11 different school districts in her 13 years of education because she did pre-k mm -hmm. and then kindergarten right. And uh, we've had to enroll her in every time. While we're enrolling her and we're trying to do the normal vaccinations and summer physicals and everything else, uh, we're also, okay, got to find a new neurologist, got to find a new physiatrist, got to find a new physical therapist. Uh, physical therapist and an occupational therapist and a speech. And so it, as you work these, it is a complicated mess. And how do you balance that? You both work 
we do. Successful, busy. That we'll see in a year from now if this was successful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Heather's successful. Thank you. <laughs> yep. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> But that, I mean, that, that seems to be a balance, uh, but you're not unique in that balance. So how, how do you how do you try to convey that, and how do you think that helps guide your your leadership uh, with families? So from an active duty perspective, as well as Garrison, it's uh, teaching patience and understanding on both sides of the fence. It's to the families to say, hey, this is a convoluted system. And to understand that the system was, right, the Army is one million strong when you uh, include all the reserve component elements. The system is made for the 400 plus thousand active duty soldiers and the one million total Army soldiers that are out there. That's what the system does. The system is not, and while there are elements to take care of the unique pockets, the system's a giant machine. So it's understanding and informing parents of, hey, you need to understand that there's all these other layers that you're going to have to go through, and it is going to be challenging because it's not made for you. Mm -hmm. But it is. But there are offices and people who are there that exist to help you. And, for example, us with the net, having a case manager because of the number of types of referrals, connecting the two of them. And then the other half, now as garrison commander, what I get to do is also those employees. Now, Lisa, she doesn't need much help. She understands. Uh, her, ar her heart is huge. Her arms are wide open. And she knows everything that's within her sphere. She knows how to make things happen. Uh, but for some of the civilian employees, especially uh, ableism is a real thing. So you just forget how things may exist for someone else is reminding them that while this may be your job and you do this every single day, for the parent that comes in or the child that comes in and needs support, that is the most important thing and the most emotional thing happening to them at that exact moment. And you need to be understanding in how you receive them. Uh, don't treat them like just another, uh, just another page in a book and go on to the next. Yeah, and something um, I would also bring up is, is it takes time. When you're working through the system and you're working through the people, they honestly want to help you. But there's, there's a time component. You have to, I had to learn to be patient because my baby needs to be helped right now. She didn't learn. I, Let's be clear. <laughs> <laughs> she, her patience may be better, but she my didn't My patience learn. is better, so I learned some. <laughs> um, but yeah, having to, having to let the system work through itself and the, the good people who are trying to help, it's hard not to be frustrated when they're running into roadblocks and... and yeah. But understanding that they are actually trying there to help you is really important. And on the flip side, sometimes the system cannot quite support what you think you need or that your child needs or that you want. I mean, there are times when the system says, uh, I'm sorry, that, that's, that's not within my purview, that's not covered. And in some cases, then you kind of got to go outside the system and, and, and that's that's something else we understand for EFMs. You spend your own money on the things you think your child needs because the government has decided that it doesn't raise to the level of, um, or it doesn't, it's not approved for whatever reason because it's new and, and interesting. But that's something else that we've dealt with. But people still helped us find the resources, even if the resources had to be on us after that. Hippotherapy is probably what she was thinking. Yeah. It is. So the use of horses in physical therapy oh. was hugely helpful to Samantha. Yeah. Uh, and so do you go to a place, you know, off uh, post, they have a... In Millersville. Yeah. We did the last time we were here. Yeah. We couldn't get the referral. Because Samantha was only with us for a year before going out to college, yeah. we couldn't get the referrals, appointments, because that's about a six-month process. Mm. To Your some of those predecessor, up. Ken McCready, big in that. Mm. Like, he... He was the first one to like help make the connection with the installation in the, oh, cool. yeah. in that program. Yeah. yeah. I said Millersville. Maybe it was Crenshaw. Millersville is right. All the way down thirty two. Yeah. Yeah. All the way down thirty two. Yeah. But I mean it is there are things that, that the system can't provide. I mean, if your if your child is is in need of some significant care, the system can't always support you in some of the day to day things. Yeah. So just knowing the EFM um, people who work within that 
uh, both halves. They can let you know what the system will do or, or even resources you can use outside the military system with the state that can really help you get the, the care or the resources that your child needs. Yeah. yeah. I sound like a commercial. <laughs> well, and addition, Visit your local EFMP office today. <laughs> in addition to having a good experience with the EFMP office, what else has been one of your favorite things about Fort Meade? Well, I'll let you go first because I don't want to color. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll. T- no, it's okay. I'll go. Um, who who usually makes? I mean, before you get who who usually makes the decisions out of YouTube? You guys are choosing a movie. <laughs> so we we actually created a system. We did because and it, the funny thing is, and we when our mothers <laughs> visit. And I know our mothers watch these, so they're going to hear this. Oh, don't but say it. when they visit, <laughs> she, she knows what I'm going to say. Um, we have two opposite challenges, right? In, in one case, that uh, you can never, well, actually, when you get into zero input, like, come on, what do you want to do, mom? You're visiting, you're here for a week, what, whatever. Yep. And you're like, oh, no, no, that doesn't fly. We need something. Because in the end, you're going to leave at the end of the week and go, well, I didn't have as good a time as I wanted. And it's not our fault. Uh, but the other half of that is if someone comes in and says, this is the only way I'm going to be happy. So neither of us like either one of those, but mm-hmm. we are human beings, and yeah. everybody has a tendency Don't to do it. one or the other, <laughs> if not both. Okay, you can say that. <laughs> she is one, I'm the other. And so we came up with this strategy early in our marriage, in we one did. or two years, is uh, depending on the topic, but mm-hmm. usually it's I have to provide three and she either has to pick one of my three or pick her own fourth, but then I don't get to complain about the fourth. No, no, you do get to complain well, about the fourth. Well, I get to fourth. complain. Yeah, 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 you get to complain get to because you gave her three yeah. options she didn't What do you them. want for dinner? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mexican, uh, yeah. Italian, Greek. It can't be I don't care. Right. Yeah. Something. Because you do care. That's right. Because you care in some way. Yeah. If the question was asked, your input will be considered. And so the, we do that kind of with the family the whole time. My, 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 Mike's mother says um, two Mike. is... I, Michael, I swallowed it. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> wow. I haven't called Mike in a while. Anyway. All right. I'll start over. Do you call it Mike? Is Never. Mike? Well, it was Michael. Okay, Never. Well, always Michael. No, no. It wasn't always. So I... Okay. All right. So story. Story time. Um, when we met, he introduced himself as Mike. And so I called him Mike for the longest time. And then it was your mother. His mother called him Michael. And she did it rep- repetitively. Yeah. And I was like, this is weird. And so I asked him, I said, do you actually prefer Mike or Michael? And he goes, well, I actually prefer <laughs> I Michael. And I'm like, you did it two years in? Why don't you tell two me? Two oh, yeah, years in. We may in. have been engaged by this point, actually. Oh, my goodness. Yes, we were engaged. And I'm like, you yeah. never told me. Why didn't you tell me? I would have called you Michael. But I also learned an important lesson, is that even if the person introduces themselves as Mike, I will ask, what do you prefer to be called? Because yeah. more often than not. Because mostly they won't yeah. say, but I would, I would like to call someone what they would like to be called, assuming it's not ridiculous. But it really like, confused yeah. her parents, too. I mean, oh, we're talking yes. like yeah. at the wedding when oh. they're asking, why do you keep calling him Michael? <laughs> Are you mad at him? No. Well, yeah, it's formal. Yeah, it's formal for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They asked me right. if I was mad at you. Now that you messed up my name, so we'll go back again. I did not. Mess Do you up remember my the name. question? Not at all. What was the question? What was the question? Was the, you asked, you asked what they oh, like about for me. Yes. Oh, what we like about for me? I really, I like the people and the, diver- the diversity. You don't find this as much on army posts, but we've got s- all the different services and civilians and Department of Defense entities, and um, it's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of difference in the community, and I like that. And I saw a lot of it at the um, the July 4th fireworks, which I can't remember the name. Red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. red white, and blue. Thank you, sir. The red, white, and blue fireworks, I saw a lot of it there. There was, the community was not, you know, it, I don't want to say it wasn't Army strong. It probably was, but it wasn't just Army. Yeah. I saw a lot of the other services, and it was the little things, you know, like I'm wearing the Navy T-shirt in, instead of the Army T-shirt, or, you know, I got the little emblem up here that's not Army-related. 
um, just things like that. And it was it was really good to see everyone coming together, getting along, having a good time, and just enjoying themselves. Now and, you may answer yeah. the question. <laughs> and so, for me, it, similarly, it's the connection to the community outside too. Now, it's I'm still blown away sometimes how you know, someone at Elk Ridge or Ellicott like City or going over to Croft and Gambrels won't know what Fort Meade is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I hadn't even heard the term Fort Meade, which fascinates me. But not understanding that it's an army base where there are people here that are doing Department of Defense work every day. Uh, you do sometimes get the, oh, that's where the NSA is. Well, like, well, okay, yes. I, I mean, I have a personal affinity for the NSA. I've worked those jobs. But that's, it's so much more. Uh, and that's what I've loved about this experience as Garrison is getting exposed to that internal and external. Uh, as far as things to do, I love Bourbon Lake. It is a serene, uh, when, I, when I think resiliency, I think Verba Lake. Being able to go and walk around the lake and see the foxes and the beavers and the, uh, the groundhogs and the... Uh, you're not going to mention the geese, you're just going to ignore... No, no, I'm saying the, the things I like. The geese <laughs> drive me nuts. But, uh, they're so mean. Well, no, the goslings... Uh, yeah, what about cute. four months ago? And then, yeah. oh my gosh, oh, that was they fantastic. were cute. They were very adorable. cute. We got to watch them grow up because every day we come out of the neighborhood, they drive down Robert the street. Yeah. and now they're hissing. Probably. Yeah, and now they're the geese that I don't care for as much. Have you seen the turtles? There's turtles too. No. Yeah, oh my gosh, there's tons of turtles. You walk yeah. out, you know, the bridge back over by the public affairs office yes. behind the playground you guys yeah. just took down. If you walk, if you take that bridge to get to the park, you'll yeah. see there's a log that's half out the ground, and there are always three or four turtles just shacked oh, up yeah. on that turtle that's or awesome. on that log. They've been featured on our Facebook page before, actually. So I, I've seen photos, but I have not actually seen them on here. And I've seen people asking, you know, in the Facebook type realms of, "Hey, anybody know what this is?" Yeah. Um, and the population must have died down because before get turtles like this big. walking across the street and people would try oh, to navigate oh, oh yeah no not cr it's a isn't it a heron? heron it is a heron yeah yeah the gray he is majestic yeah. and he likes to stand at that end the at um, the fishing dock that's the right fishing there dock off of that's right there off of roberts <laughs> he stands on the railing and we see him about once a day just standing there. but i don't know if they <laughs> eat turtles but maybe that's why the turtles <laughs> 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 down. it's a bird and fish like okay fair Look. enough could. Great, so now we're going to do a lightning round of questions. Okay. So, and I keep looking at the camera because it feels yes, weird. Yes, keep looking at the camera. Is I'm trying to... Uh, <laughs> okay. So you just got to say the first thing that comes to your mind while I ask you this question. What is your first. favorite place to eat? This can be on or off base. So if you heard my questions earlier with my wife, that mine, salt mine. Love it. It's fantastic. What is a surprising fact about you? I don't know because I'm so honest. I think it's all out there. Okay. I is, won second in the world tournament of Odyssey of the Mind, and I don't know if anybody will know what that means. What is your favorite book? The Long Walk, Stephen King. What is your favorite movie? Galaxy Quest. What is your favorite sports team? Chiefs! What has been your most favorite duty station? Or assignment. Okay, I'm sorry Fort Meade community, you are number two. Because we did get a chance to live in Hawaii. And it's really hard to beat Hawaii from being there. Uh, but as far as a base, I, so assignment, Hawaii, uh, we'd go back in an instant, the Aloha script was real. But Fort Meade, my favorite base. Great, thank you so much. Um, Alright, so you mentioned a little bit about, how'd you guys meet? West Point, right? No. No? No. We met sure. at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Liberty. in the Airborne Inn. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Fort we Liberty. met at Fort Bragg, now known now as Fort Liberty. Now known as Fort Liberty. You know who gave them that guidance? What guidance? Of like how to transition from the old installation to the new installation? looking at it. Nice That's job. Public affairs. See, there you go. Say it one more time. How do I say well, it? No, Fort Bragg, now known as Liberty. Fort, yes. Fort yeah. Liberty? Fort Liberty. Or you can go the other way. We can't. Liberty, the official Fort guidance, Liberty. though, was Fort Bragg, now known as Liberty, yeah. if you're talking about the past. Yeah. No, but is it Fort Liberty or is it just Liberty? Fort Liberty. Okay, just making sure I had it. 
Okay, so we met at the Airborne Inn at Fort Bragg, now known as Fort Liberty, yes. North Carolina. Uh, both of it, it was between our junior and senior year of college for both of us. Um, he came from West Point, he came from Virginia Tech. It was cadet summer training because I was an active duty army officer for about seven years. And not everybody knows, but Virginia Tech has a core of cadets. They do have a core Like of Texas A&M's, just not quite as good. Right. <gasps> wow. But not quite as big. Really? Not oh, quite as good? Sorry. It's for Samantha. Well, Samantha's it's Samantha. going there. I know. Her daughter's going to the I didn't cadets. say one was better than the other. I said one was bigger than the other. But we have to. Why do we have Because we're parents of it. Oh, okay. Gig'em. Gig'em. <laughs> Howdy! I, think, I mean, Virginia Tech would have won in football yeah. before like a couple years well, ago. Well, yeah. yeah. Then they got really She was bad. there during then the Michael Vick years, actually. Yeah, was he there was there one of her classmates. Years. He was. Yeah. Had a history yeah. class with him. Was, he was a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, <laughs> right. Oh, so um, we're both doing our summer training. Summer training. They put all the cadets up in the Airborne Inn, which had the central area and... I'm told it, like it was torn room, down, right? right? No, it's not torn down, but it is something been, else. It's now, it's now apartments. Basically. Well, it was like a hub and spoke. So there was a center area where there was couches and just kind of you yeah. know, just hang out, and then the rooms went off in different in different directions. And at the end of the day, the cadets would sit in that area, and we would all talk about what we did because we were all with different army units. And we met when I. Several of us had, had already come back and gotten into shorts and t-shirts and were just hanging out there. He walks in in his West Point uniform and I, well, <laughs> I said yeah, to him... Because we had payday activities. Which so is I, not with, I was with the 82nd. She was with CORE. Yeah. Really? Uh, right. RIMF. And so as I came back from the 313th, because of payday activities, I was wearing my Class Bs. Now, I say that in quotes because it's the West Point version. So it's the gray pants with a bright white shirt amongst mm -hmm. all the people in their army greens. At the yes. Mm -hmm. So he got off the elevator and I looked at him and said, why are you all dressed up? So an Good insult. Line. I thought so. An insult was her first line to me. That wasn't yeah. an insult. <laughs> that she was a legitimate making, question. Making. Everyone else got to wear BDUs. Why Why did you have to dress up? Because yeah. he was West Point. They're special. <laughs> well, <special>. right. <laughs> and, uh, standing out in the crowd as a leg. Right, so if yep. anybody's really paying attention. I am not alone. I wasn't airborne, airborne, and I was in a uniform that couldn't that have stood out much worse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, I mean, we had a very casual, quick conversation. Who was conversation. more whore? Between you two. I don't know if either one of us was really whore. But I, so, I have a guess. It. It, but I know. <laughs> we know which one's more type A. How about that? <laughs> the person who destroyed her Kevlar and cost us a CIF repayment. It was an because accident. Because accident. <laughs> <laughs> it was a weapon. Uh, that poor tree will never be the same. But uh, it, no. So the second day, in, in the longer conversation, because at that point all I wanted to do was go back to the room. Mm -hmm. But the next day, I. No kidding, saw her shining her boots in the hallway. And they were glorious. Remember, these are for the older ones. We uh, look at the specialists in the room. We had to wear black leather boots that we had to actually shine. And they had to shine like, like the core frams. And uh, Which I is never, possible. never, ever did a good job of shining. I, it always looked dull. And I was walking past the hallway, and I saw her out there with uh, it was Dana. I think yeah. it was next to you. And shining boots. And I went, Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Teach me how to shine boots. <laughs> so, um, we True been story. together ever that since. Was True story. First date. That, yeah, it yeah. was. How shine boots. Well, actually, our first date was Snake Eyes. Horrible movie. Oh, it was a horrible oh, so movie. So bad. I thought she. This Who is how I it? know she. Did, did you I use your it. system of three? <laughs> well, no, because we hadn't worked that, that out yet. yet. I picked. We maybe that, each other maybe like that's a week. why we have the system of three. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this you is how snake eyes. That would get you out of picking We were born to be together because that was our first date. And there was a second right. date, is what <laughs> you mean. Yeah. The second date was Saving Private Ryan. Watch that this week. That's such a no, great No, the second date was the Mexican place. Oh, and then Private then Ryan. Then Private Ryan. Yeah. Both so good choices. Good choices. Yeah. Yeah. But she married. asked a question. How Sorry. long now? So the year is 2023. Good job. Which means it's been 23 years. <laughs> oh, well, that's I did. Crazy. I did that to help him. That's what she claims. Oh, that but is she a, changed we got married our year wedding 2000. date. Mm. Only oh. because we had a planned date and the venue wasn't good She on cared that day, more so. about the venue than the day. And we were planning our wedding between her Kuwait deployment as a yep. Patriot launcher 
Uh, Patriot, what's the official title? Patriot, Patriot Control Officer. Yes. So as a Patriot Control Officer deployed to Kuwait, and I was going to a K-4 rotation in Macedonia, yeah. uh, then known as the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Firal. And we had to plan our wedding between those two events. We did. So we had about a, at the time we thought it was going to be about three weeks. Uh, and we were it stationed was. in Germany. So we had to plan everything where we flew back to the States, mm -hmm. did the wedding, got me back in time to deploy. Yep. Were, were you at Doha or Air John? Ali Asalim. Okay. Yeah. So you were. So there. yeah, yeah it was before the it, the air of John and. This the, is before nine eleven. Yeah. So Doha yeah. and Ali Asling were there. Yep. And I was because I was there ninety nine two thousand. That's when I was there ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no two thousand because. Oh yeah, you're this, right. December, December of ninety nine. Two thousand. Two thousand. I was there for like I think that's where I rang in the millennium. Millennium two thousand. I got there just after that. Because she rang it in in Berlin. I did ring it in in Berlin. That's probably what's cool. Right? And I was home Much. in Texas waiting for the world to fall apart. <laughs> Planes to fall y out of the sky. Y2K. Y2K. Elevators were going to fall down shafts. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. We can tell you all about this later. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy times. Well, bringing it back to the present. Okay. Yeah, Fort Meade. So what are some of the challenges that you faced? being garrison commander and how have you sort of yeah. come it, it, certainly communicating it's amazing how difficult it is and I have such a respect for everybody in here that's public affairs that's true like how do you reach 200,000 people who are all listening for different reasons mm -hmm. they all want to hear not necessarily different as in opposing opposite arguments they don't want to hear the sun's up when it's down and it's down when it's up but they're not the same and so how they're listening affects what they're receiving even though you're communicating the listening? same how do you get that all out and uh, and it is because we, we're trying to reach the residents who live here then this is their city we're trying to reach the um, the people that are vendors that work here and they come here to make a living mm -hmm. we're trying to reach the unit leaders who have a mission and a purpose here the retirees who want to come in and stay connected and volunteer trying to reach the USO, who's got events and things they're doing. Um, and all of the state, county, uh, elected leaders and government entities out there that are all part of just make this area better. So communication is what I, I would say is most impactful on learning and how hard that is. Thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a pleasure getting to know you uh, both as a couple and as um, the first family of the installation. Uh, thank you for joining First us. <laughs> is that the official? It, it sort of is. It, it, apparently it is. Okay. Well, and thank you everyone for listening in today. Uh, we'll see you next time on the next episode of Fort Meade Declassified. Hold up, I got a new man for free. God just got it. It's amazing. Life is just a marathon. So